you're all very welcome. And we have yet another beautiful morning here in Manchester. It really is absolutely gorgeous. So praise God. And it's the sun is shining in our hearts. So we'll, we'll start with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray this, Lord, with your will and in the name of everyone. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Jesus, with the dawn of each new day, through your dearest mother Mary, I renew my acceptance of this gift. And I thank you with all my heart and soul. May I live every moment in your divine will. Jesus, I desire to enter into you, be one with you and take what I find in you. Jesus, I find in you my own life, the lives of everyone from Adam to the last one to be created, which you have perfectly redone in your divinity. And I offer them to the Father, for his glory, a perfect return of love. Amen. My Jesus, in your loving providence, you've allowed us to learn that your kingdom is now coming on earth, which we can enter into, and we can enter into this kingdom. This is what I wish to do with all my heart. I want your divine will to reign in me all day long, as it did in paradise in Adam and Eve, as it did in your home in Nazareth, in Mary with Joseph. I want your divine will to reign in me as it did in Louisa, firstborn in the divine will in these times. I want you to animate all that I do, think my thoughts, speak my words and do my actions. I want the divine will to have complete freedom, my humanity, so that at every moment of this day and night, your holy will may be done in me. To give you all the love, adoration, praise, thanksgiving, honour glory, reparation on behalf of the human race, and especially on behalf of those who do not yet know they can enter into the kingdom of your divine will. Amen. Ever holy and indivisible Trinity, I adore you profoundly. I love you intensely. Thank you perpetually for all and in the hearts of all. Can you hear me? Perfectly, Tara. Okay, it went off a bit then, sorry. Okay. Daily prayer to the Heavenly Queen for the month of May. Immaculate Queen, my Heavenly Mother, I come upon your maternal lap as your dear child to abandon myself in your arms and to entreat you with the most ardent sighs in this month consecrated to you. The greatest grace of all, may you dispose me to live in the kingdom of the divine will. Holy Mother, as the queen of this kingdom, dispose me, your child, to live in it, so that it may no longer be deserted, but filled with your children. I entrust myself to you, my sovereign queen, that you may guide my steps into the kingdom of the divine will. Held tightly by your maternal hand, guide my whole being to live the unending life of the divine will. May you be a mother to me, and I shall offer to you, my mother, my own will, so that you may make it completely submissive to the divine will, and I will be sure never to leave its kingdom. So I entreat you to illuminate me and make me understand what the will of God means. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
daily aspiration of the month, in the morning, at midday, and in the evening, that is three times a day, let us climb upon the lap of our Heavenly Mother and say, My Mother, I love you. Love me too. Increase in my soul the will of God. Grant me your blessing also, so that I may do all my actions under your maternal gaze. Day 28. The expectation of Christ's resurrection, his victory over death, and the release of the souls from limbo. My sorrowful mother, I who am your little child, see you by yourself, without your beloved and good Jesus. I long to cling to you and keep you company in your most bitter desolation. Without Jesus, you experience nothing but sorrow. But having anything but the memory of his harrowing pains, of the sweet sound of his voice, which still resounds in your ears, of dear Jesus' charming gaze, in his moments of sweetness, sadness, and tear-filled weeping that always enraptured your maternal heart, are like sharp swords that pierce your maternal heart through and through. Desolate mother, I, your dear child, offer you my compassion to assuage each one of your sorrows. What is more, I would like to be for you another Jesus, to offer you all the love, comfort, consolation and compassion that Jesus himself would have given you in your state of bitter desolation. Sweet Jesus gave me to you as your child. Now allow me to act in his stead with your maternal heart so that I may be to you another Jesus in all things my mother. I will dry your tears and offer you my perpetual company. Dearest child, thank you for your company. If you wish your company to be sweet and dear to me, and if you wish to be the bearer of comfort to my pierced heart, allow me to find in you the operating and dominating divine will, whereby you refuse to concede so much as one breath of life to your own will. Then will I exchange you with my son Jesus, because only by means of his divine will reigning in you will I experience Jesus alive and reigning in your heart. And how happy I shall be to find in you the first fruits of Jesus' sorrow and death, in finding my beloved Jesus in my child, my pains will convert into joys and my sorrows into conquests. Now, child of my sorrows, listen closely to what your tender mother wishes to tell you. As my dear son breathed his last, he descended into the prison of limbo as the triumphant bearer of glory and joy to all the patriarchs, prophets, the first father Adam, dear Saint Joseph, my holy parents and all those who had been saved by virtue of the foreseen merits of the future Redeemer. Because I was inseparable from my son, not even death could take him away from me. So in my ardent sorrows, I followed him into limbo and witnessed and rejoiced and thanksgiving which that great host of souls offered my son who had suffered so much for them. Indeed, his first step was directed towards them to beatify them and bring them with him to heavenly glory. So with Jesus' death, there began the conquests and glories for him and for all those who loved him. And this dear child, symbolizes the manner in which all conquests, glories and joys begin in the divine order for the soul who makes its will die in union with the divine will, even in the face 
of life's greatest sorrows. So even though my, the eyes of my soul followed my son and I never lost sight of him, during those three days in which he was in the sepulchre, I so yearned to see him risen that in my ardent love, I kept repeating, rise my glory, arise my life. My desires were so ardent and my yearning so inflamed that my human nature was completely consumed in love. Now, in this yearning, I saw my dear son accompanied by this great host of souls leaving limbo and returning to the sepulchre. It was the dawn of the third day, and just as all na nature wept over him, so now it's rejoiced in him. So much so that the sun anticipated its course to witness the event of my son's resurrection. But what a surprise it was to see that before resurrecting, he showed this great host of souls from limbo, his most sacred humanity, covered with blood, wounded and disfigured for love of them, exactly as it was when he was on the cross. All were deeply moved and gratefully contemplated the excess of his love in the great miracle of the redemption. Oh, my child, how I long for you also to witness the events of the re resurrection of my son. He was cloaked with majesty and from his divinity, united to his humanity, his soul unleashed enchanting seas of light and beauty that filled heaven and earth. Then triumphantly making use of his power, he commanded his deceased humanity to receive his soul again and rise triumphant and glorious to immortal life. What a solemn event this was. My dear Jesus triumphed over death, saying, death, you will no longer be death, but life. With this triumphant act, Jesus sealed the reality that he was in his one divine person, both man and God. And with his resurrection, he confirmed his doctrine, his miracles, the life of the sacraments and the entire life of the church. Moreover, he obtained the triumph of the human will of all souls that are weakened and almost dead to any true good, so that the life of the divine will that was to bring the fullness of holiness and all blessings to souls might triumph over them. And in, and in so doing, and by virtue of his resurrection, he also sowed the seed of resurrection to eternal glory in all human bodies. My child, the resurrection of my son encloses everything and it is the most solemn act of Jesus for love of souls. Now, my child, listen closely to what your tender mother wishes to tell you. I wish to speak to you as a mother who loves her child very much. I wish to tell you what it means to do the divine will and to live in it. The example is given to you by my son and by me. Our life was strewn with pains, poverty and humiliations to the point of, my, of me seeing my beloved son die amidst sorrows. But in all this, the divine will excelled. The divine will was the, the life of our sorrows through which it's made us feel triumphant and victorious. So much so that it changed death itself into life. 
Indeed, in experiencing the great blessings of the divine will, we had such interior resolve that we voluntarily exposed ourselves to sufferings. For having the divine will in us, over which no one had any power, we knew that no one had power over us. Thus suffering was in our power, which we invoked as our nourishment and conqueror in the work of redemption in order to purchase for the entire world all the blessings God had prepared for it. Now, dear child, if you allow the divine will to become the center of your life and especially of your sorrows, you can be certain that sweet Jesus will use you and your sorrows to administer assistance, light and grace to the entire universe. Therefore, have courage, for the divine will can do great things wherever it reigns. In all circumstances, reflect yourself in me and in your sweet Jesus and forge ahead. Holy Mother, if you help me and keep me sheltered beneath your mantle, as my heavenly sentry, I am certain that all my pains will convert into the will of God, and I will follow you step by step along the unending ways of the supreme fiat. For I know that your enrapturing motherly love and power will conquer my will. Keep it in your power and exchange it for me with the divine will. And so, my mother, I entrust myself to you and abandon myself into your arms. Today, to honour me, recite seven times, not my will, but yours be done, while offering me my sorrows in exchange for the grace to do always the divine will. Dear mother, for the sake of the resurrection of your son, make me rise again in the will of God. <laughs>